In the last video, we did a short recap of the main topics covered in this module. In the current video, I'd like to discuss collisions. Collisions is a very interesting topic, but since this course focuses on practical computer networks and cases that many people may actually deal with and see with their own eyes, collisions will not be of our focus. We shall therefore address this issue just shortly. If you wish to skip this topic, feel free to go on to the next video. To simplify our discussion, let us consider a network using classic Ethernet, where all computers are attached to a single cable. Let us say that A wants to send a message to B, and C wants to send a message to D. Let's say that while A is transmitting its frame, C is also transmitting its frame. In this case, the frames will collide. When this happens, we get errors, much like the case where two people start to speak in the same time and it is impossible to understand either of them. How are collisions handled in Ethernet? Ethernet uses two main mechanisms to deal with collisions. The first is called CSMA, which stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access. This basically means that when a station wants to transmit data, it first senses the channel to see if anyone else is transmitting by checking the signal level of the line. If the channel is in use, the station will wait and try again later. So, if A is transmitting and C wants to send data, C will wait until A finishes its transmission before starting to transmit on its own. This is just like the case in a human conversation where one person waits until the other stops talking and only then does that person talk. Yet, just like the case where two people might start talking at the exact same time, two Ethernet machines might start transmitting data at the same time. In this case, CD, collision detection, comes into place. CD means that the transmitting devices detect the fact that a collision has occurred. This is achieved by listening to the channel while transmitting. For example, let's say that station A transmits the bitstream 11001010. While transmitting, A is also listening to the channel. If no collision occurred, A would also read the signal 11001010 from the line. If, however, a collision occurred, let's say with a frame sent by C, then A would read something different from the line, for instance, 11011010. This way, A realizes that its frame has collided. A can realize that even before it finishes transmitting the frame. Then, A stops transmitting and issues a jam signal to tell the other stations that a collision has occurred. As a result, both stations stop transmitting and wait a random interval of time before trying to submit again. The amount of time that the stations wait increases with the number of collisions in the network. So on the first collisions, A and C wait for a relatively short amount of time before transmitting again. If another collision occurs, they might wait longer. Now, recall that when we discussed the Ethernet frame, we mentioned that there is a minimum length for that frame. Ethernet requires that valid frames must be at least 64 bytes long from destination address to checksum, including both. So the data has to be at least 46 bytes long. If the frame is too short, then it must be padded. One reason for having it this minimum is directly related to the collision detection mechanism stated above. Let us consider the following scenario. A wants to transmit a really, really short frame to B a frame that is only one byte long. I'm exaggerating, of course, this can't really happen in Ethernet, but it will be helpful for the explanation. So A transmits this frame, which consists of eight ones. A listens to the channel while transmitting and also reads eight ones from it, reaching the conclusion that the frame has been transmitted successfully. However, before the frame reaches the other end of the network, D starts transmitting a very short frame, one byte long, consisting of eight zeros. D listens to the channel while transmitting and also reads eight zeros from the channel, concluding that the frame has been transmitted successfully. Now, these two really short frames collide, yet neither A nor D are aware of this collision. Both of them have already concluded that the frame has been successfully delivered. In order to avoid such cases, 
the frame must be long enough to prevent the station from completing its transmission before the first bit of the frame reaches the far end of the line. Having a minimum length for Ethernet frames solves this issue. This was a very short discussion of collisions. If you'd like to know more about this topic, I'll mention some references in the description. The next videos are aimed at those of you who know how to program, specifically in Python, and they discuss a code library that allows you to sniff, create, and modify frames. If you don't know Python, you can skip these videos. I'll explain a bit more in the upcoming video. After these videos, we'll address the next layer in our model, the network layer.